Is that my uh throw it down? <gasps> Flowers. All right, let's go downstairs. I don't know where my flashlight is. Hello. Jump scare made my heart hurt. Oh my goodness. I don't know. I saw her around the corner at the last second. I peeked around. Oh no. Nah. That's Corey Kenshin. He plays horror games and he plays a lot of them. In that clip, he was playing a game called Carson House the third entry in the Fears to Fathom series. Fears to Fathom is an episodic series made up of true stories about horrific events. The game's developer Rail then takes these stories and turns them into psychological horror games. In this entry, you play as an 18-year-old high schooler that experiences an unsettling occurrence while house-sitting for a media personality. But this unsettling occurrence stems from a relationship. Relationships aren't fun. They require a lot of time, effort, and sometimes they don't even work out. I've had a few relationships over the years and well, they all seem to end the same way. Sure, I managed to get over them. But what happens if you don't? If you never manage to get over your ex? What the f This is where we enter the world of stalkers. People will fall victim to obsession. A stalker can be someone you know, someone you don't know, a co-worker, a friend, an ex-partner, even a twitch- What? Dude, why is the word oh. censored? To be honest, I couldn't really tell you. I think it's offensive, what? something like that. How do you do this? Bro, it's, it's literally the word shrimp without the H and the R. What are you talking about? I don't know what to tell you, man. Seriously, I don't know. Damn, the wind. What are you doing? We don't smoke. <coughs> Who's we? <weed? coughs> Damn. Yeah. You're an idiot. You know that, right? I know. I, I thought I'd try and look cool for the skin. <coughs> So to put it simply, in this game you're being stalked by your ex, if that wasn't obvious enough. And by the way, if you don't like, comment and subscribe, I'm gonna stalk you. I found this premise pretty intriguing, so I decided to head over to Steam, purchase the game and try it out. Safe to say, I wasn't ready, and I wasn't the only one. That scared the shit out of me, bro. That almost gave me a tension headache, bro. The guy you just witnessed have a hernia is called Belize, one of the greatest of all time. Some would refer to him as the GOAT. He, just like me, also drew uh. himself upon playing Carson House. Not my best joke to wash my hands, gross. So what is it about this game that makes it so horrifying? Well, I believe it all boils down to Kara. Kara is a stalker and she's stalking you. I feel it's safe to say that the fear of being stalked is a rational one.
Carson House begins in an exciting manner. It doesn't pull any punches. There's no build-up. You just arrive at the house. Like I said, keep the doors locked and don't open the door for anyone. I heard you the first time, Dad. Okay, now get your ass to work. I hope you know, I'm only in it for the snacks. And a hundred dollars I'm gonna get. Damn, it was a nice neighborhood. Got any mail? Need me to bring any mail? Oh, I thought there was a spoon on the ground. You walk around. A fake rock. Backyard. Ugh, why is there a cum stain on the deck? Feed the dog. Y'all hearing this? Every time you step outside, this on be look, it got something to do with this neighbor right here. Look at that. Probably ain't even in days! Poke your head in a few of the rooms. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. Okay. I don't really like this. I don't really like this for real. Um, the basement was a little too dark. Absolutely, I agree. The stranger's house, you don't know what's gonna help. Oh. Oh. I can aim. Oh, my bad. Oh, shit. Hey, yo, my bad, dog. I didn't mean to. I, this happens all the time, especially when you're not looking. They flush. Are you not flushing? Okay, good. Thank you. Wash my hands. Are you not washing your hands before you touch your phone? Don't you dare. Don't you dare. See, that's the horror. Now, I can't help but notice. They're setting up some backstory here with Kara. I really disappointed him with Kara. Wait, did that bitch call you again? I wonder if we're gonna run into our ex-girlfriend. Wow, very creepy. Milk? Uh, oh, oh, you can, you can individually take out everything from the... Oh, yeah, I'm house-sitting, all right. I just realized the house was way bigger than ours. Something like that, bro. Did I see something out there? Nah, surely not. What is this? <gasps> Mr. Carson's office looked like a good spot I could just sit down and work at. What the f no, what the f is this? Oh, it's a sir. Oh. <laughs> That's a s server. Okay. I uh I was very convinced this was a human cage and I don't know why. This is actually insane. All right. Let's do iNet. Oh, crap. Oh no, that's going to be creepy. Hold on, Mr. Carson. I'm browsing the house. Wait. Was that door always open? I left the door open? I'm house sitting for a hundred dollars and I left the door open. I'm so dumb. Hello, I'm the hand merchant. Buy some hands. Buy some hands. Have hands? I'll give you hands. Before the homeowner asks you to buy some groceries. I get groceries in the middle of the night. Seriously. Above my pay grade. I think you should get the groceries before it gets too dark outside. There's some cash in my nightstand. Wow, that's my list. Um, ranch, strawberry, jelly. Okay. Took Alex's bike, because outside the garage. I was already going to steal that, but I mean, take the bike. So, um, no need to tell me twice. Oh, boy, I'm actually manually controlling the bike. That's sweet. Jan. Oh, oh. Yeah, 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 Yo, chat, 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 talk to me nice. I know how to ride a bike. I just follow a car? Wait, if I just go off in the middle of the street, is it gonna take me? All right, I guess we just ride. If I hold a sprint, do I go faster? And so it begins. The fear of the mundane. An irrational feeling that something is not quite right, even though everything appears to be okay. Rail seems to have a fondness for mundane horror, which involves portraying an everyday scene with subtle details that have disturbing implications. This is often achieved by taking relatable, comfortable situations and adding an element of horror into the mix. An example of this could be that you're home alone and find a stranger at the door. Wait, 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 wait. Paula sent me, Sitch. He's been creeping through the windows. We're calling the cops. You kids lock the door. How do your room? Ain't nobody here. What's good? What's good? What's good? 
or discover someone hiding in a closet while staying in a motel. Somebody just walked to the closet. Somebody is in the room. In this particular case, it's a simple task of house sitting but when flowers are unexpectedly left at the front door. Flowers? I don't know what to make of it. Oops. Maybe um, Roy got a, a, a new girlfriend or something. And a text from an unknown number that asks. Unknown sender, oh boy. Hey, how are you? What did you have for dinner? Things become unsettling. As I've mentioned in a previous video, mundane horror is not a new concept, but when executed correctly, it can be a highly effective way to create a terrifying experience that feels realistic and grounded. So when you finish grocery shopping and cycle back to the house, you may have felt that something was off, but you couldn't quite put your finger on it. This is where some of us may have realized that Kara had most likely been watching the player during their visit to the store. As she can be spotted leaving before you arrive. And that begs the question, what other instances of her surveillance had you been unaware of? It's 9.46 p.m. You've just finished cycling back to the house. With a bag of groceries in hand, you make your way inside. Little did you know that this mundane act of returning home would mark the beginning of a harrowing experience. All right, we're gonna put this in the fridge and then we're gonna get back to work then. Turn that TV on though. I'm not asking to hear ghosts. Why did I have to see this? Oh my gosh. Carson House does a great job at utilizing the whole creeping dread horror style, with small odd happenings occurring constantly around the house and strange coincidences that gradually build up to the game's climax. Hey, who turned the porch light on? Wasn't there a porch light on? I could have sworn there was a port. Oh, I'm about to say, why is that shadow? Okay. Ooh. Now I'm scared. But the groceries in the kitchen, I'm so nervous, my God. Something is not right. I'm gonna go do my homework, but I'm checking those security cameras. You damn well better believe it. Some, some, I, yo, I don't know why I got chills. It's not because Michael my daddy right there. But some had to pop off in that time I was gone. The house you're watching is just a little too quiet, to the point of being unsettling. The constant state of apprehension keeps the player on edge throughout the game. Okay. What's going on? Andy's blowing up my phone. Dude, since you're Carson's right, you need to see this. Search up Roy Carson divorce on the internet right now. Roy Carson divorce. Roy Carson claims to be receiving death threats from the angry fans of his ex-wife. Uh-huh. Okay. Given some of the story beats surrounding the owner of the house, you may have initially thought that he would be the story's antagonist. And as a result, upon returning home, when the doorbell rings, players may have felt conflicted about whether or not to answer it. So y'all know he's getting death threats. Not only do y'all use his picture, but y'all show his home and put an arrow right to his face. Messy, bro, just messy. Sources say Roy Carson has been uh, people knocking. <laughs> no, um, I didn't, 
I think I'm tripping. Um. Um. Who's coming to confront me? Ah! Uh... Why does he have a bag? This is stupid. Okay. Oh, great. Thank you. I'm not going to answer. Why would I answer this? I'm not answer. Great. That's totally cool. Thanks. No, thanks, but no thanks. We don't want any. Get out. I'm not answering the door. My dad told me not to answer the door. I've tried to lock the door multiple times at this point. No. Get out of here. You end up opening the door. Yeah, However, it turned out just to be a pizza delivery. Give me that f***ing pizza! Hell yeah! Thank you for the pizza! What is that? Did I just hear a door open? Hold on. Dude, I don't know if... What the... Is that that? Is that that? We'll have to spend the night. Oh my god, bro, this is too scary. Okay, I don't like this anymore. As you sink your teeth into the savory pizza pie, there's another ring at the doorbell. And who would that be? Would you I open the door to a bouquet oh, of flowers? flowers. Thank you! Didn't know what to make of it. Hmm. Well, they're beautiful. Hey, it is what it is. Thank you for my flowers. They look great on my little hey. table. Flowers? Jesus, I didn't know what to make of it. They want me to put it in water or something? I'm gonna leave it right there, they my flowers. Thereafter, a series of text messages from an unknown sender begins to flood your phone. Hey, how are you? What did you have for dinner? Pizza. Nothing to be worried about. It's just flowers from an obsessed fan who knows my address and has my phone number. I just got a message from an unknown sender. Hey, how are you? What did you have for dinner? Were you the person who sent me the flowers? I assumed it was a wrong number. Orale, güey. Van a empezar con esas chingaderas. Where's my flashlight? These events serve to heighten the player's sense of paranoia, leaving them on edge and uncertain of what may come next. What? Who is that? Someone just left the, the flowers? Someone's in my backyard. You can't shake the feeling that a threat lurks somewhere in the shadows, waiting quietly for an opportunity to strike. They could be inside the house, outside, behind a corner, or in one of the rooms. Five messages? Upon reading the text messages, it becomes clear that this stalker is none other than Kara, the protagonist's former girlfriend. She cuts the power, prompting you to go outside and turn it back on. While I was in the middle of my schoolwork, the power went off. Don't play with me. Oh my god. Okay, we gotta go check on the dog. How do we fix the power? Oh shit. I can't do this. I cannot do this, bro. I can't do this. Dark's barking like crazy. This is risky, but I'm gonna step outside in case my flashlight dropped out there, because I've not seen it. This is ridiculous. How do I turn on the power? Where is the power? What is the power? Why is the power? Well, okay, I guess we're playing in the dark. Oh, there it is. Oh my God. Bro, what the fuck? The dog was leading us here the entire time. I could tell that someone had cut the power off from outside. This was a distraction, and now she's hiding somewhere in the house. You're no longer safe. Oh no, they're in the house. There it is. You said we stay friends. This is Kara. 
No, no, no. No, this is your ex. This is your ex. Turner, this is not funny. I know it's you. I told y'all my head is itching, bro. I get nervous. I'm gonna go. <laughs> I, I, again, I, I, at any moment, someone is gonna jump out at me. At first, you have no idea where Kara is hiding, and that uncertainty is what makes this segment of the game so terrifying. The fear of the unknown heightens the tension and creates a disturbed atmosphere that saturates the entire game. If I had to describe the sense of impending doom that the game sows into the player, it would be similar to running up a dark staircase. Logically, you know that there's nothing to be afraid of. However, you still feel a terrifying presence around you and need to flee as quickly as possible. Watch the camera, watch the camera. As the game progresses, the tension builds and builds until you finally reach the climactic confrontation with Kara. In a moment of sheer terror, you find yourself trapped in the upstairs study, feeling as though you're boxed in with no way out. Bro. The dev is so clean with it. When I text her back, you can hear the phone in the house if that's not the smoothest thing i have ever heard oh my gosh little things like that is crazy i heard her grab a knife i heard her grab a knife i heard something that i heard it bro i heard the shink i heard it I you heard it! I am a sound whore and I am proud! The door is open. The back door is open. Why? Oh my god, what is she doing? I don't know what to do. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I don't know what to do. Hello. He's in the room just over there. Something ain't right. Something ain't right. Y'all saw her over there, right? Y'all seen her over there, right? I'm not tripping. She in the house, right? Hey, this is real sketchy. Oh, someone's, someone's outside. I hear some footsteps. I hear footsteps. I hear footsteps. Why do I hear footsteps? Why do I hear footsteps? No me chingues, a mí no me chingas, wey, there's a lady right there! It's here that you finally see her. On the cameras, you watch as the woman slowly makes her way throughout the house, going from room to room, getting closer and closer to your location with each passing moment. Oh my goodness! What the heck? She's right there! I felt my heart skip a me, bro, she's right there! What room is that? Oh shit. She gonna check that one? Oh. She's checking that. She's checking all the all the rooms. She upstairs. What room is that? She over here watching the TV. The shots of her moving through the darkened halls are absolutely terrifying. And as the player, you can't help but feel petrified as you wait for her to arrive. Ah! She's coming! She's coming! She's coming! What do I do? The eerie atmosphere, the unsettling music, and the creeping sense of dread all come together to create a truly unforgettable horror experience. Ah! Alright, leave.
And I think that's what makes Kara work so well, is how grounded in reality she is. And in turn, what makes the Fears to Fathom series so great. There are some genuinely terrifying and unstable people out there, and it's entirely possible that a situation like this could reasonably happen to someone in real life. Earlier, I mentioned that the fear of being stalked is a rational one, a real fear. And it's true. I believe that if something feels real, if it feels tangible, it becomes even scarier. Personally, the scariest part of the game for me was watching Kara creep through the house via the surveillance cameras, which is not unlike the gameplay of Five Nights at Freddy's. Fears to Fathom Carson House is a terrifying game that succeeds in evoking fear and anxiety in players due to its realistic and relatable nature. Sure, the game's setting and characters are based on familiar horror tropes. The isolated empty house. the sinister knife-wielding antagonist and the feeling of being trapped. However, what sets this game apart is how it presents these tropes in a way that feels all too real. With the character of Kara, the game's antagonist being a particularly effective source of fear. Kara's actions and motivations are relatable in a disturbing way, making her all the more frightening. This is why Fears to Fathom Carson House is the horror game that broke YouTubers, that broke me. A great example of how to tell a horrifying story in a video game. And with that, I would like to suggest that if you have a frightening story to share, you should consider submitting it to 